basically, I will be talking about some of the narratives around ReFi as an ecosystem. And in the screen, there are uh, the narratives we already know, uh, the technology, the regeneration on the ground, and the finance. And those we already know, everyone, everyone in this event already know uh, at least one of two of these features of the ReFi as an ecosystem. But still, we, are, we don't have today mass adoption of ReFi, as we don't have mass adoption of Web3. And why? We provide a better technology. We provide a cheapest technology. We provide fastest technology. We provide trustless technology. So why are people not coming? What about build and they come? Why? One of the things blockchain has done for technology and finance technology in general is replace the need for trust for access to truth. You don't need trust in blockchain. You can access the data. You can open the smart contract. You can open the white paper and see the contract and see the, the rules. So we don't need trust anymore. But what's this? What is the relation between trust, truth, refi, and blockchain, and mass adoption? Um, so, open access to truth made possible our global community of nerds to exist. We exist because of global access to truth. Uh, for example, at refi spring, I didn't explain what is refi spring. I will do that. So, at refi spring, we are a team of four people. Uh, I'm in Brazil, Hirward in Italy, Caitlin in Berlin, and Roxana in Barcelona, Spain. Spain. And we never met each other. But instead, but yet, at Wi-Fi Spring, what we do is support uh, local communities, mostly in the global south, to have the first contact with the ReFi as a with ReFi as an ecosystem. And we do that by providing uh, education by providing the, the whole process of onboarding. And this process can, can have like four months or two weeks, depends on the community. Because on, at ReFi Spring, we are building trust, not truth. We already have truth on blockchain. We don't need to recreate it. And we can, we can exist at ReFi Spring as a global team because of truth, but yet we are building, we are searching for the trust of the, of the in local communities, mostly in the global south. And you see uh, during the presentation some of the faces of, uh, of the refi in the global south. Um, so we don't need trust anymore in the blockchain, Web3, and refi. So it's the case to abandon it. Total hope. We don't need that anymore. And then I come with. Um, uh, an answer, no, we need trust. Why we need trust? Uh, technology, finance are built around truth, science. But, but yet, our lives are built around trust. Neighborhoods, the relation between uh, small business, small farmers, love. Everything we, we build our lives around is trust. In an emergency, in a catastrophe, you reach for the people who you trust. You not, you not check the facts in a catastrophe, in an emergency. You just reach for help for everyone who you trust. So, truth, truth, trust is what binds people together when everything else fails. And today, our global order is failing. Our institutions are failing. Our economy at a global scale are failing. Science is failing. Not because science cannot provide us truth. On the contrary, science is, is saving us from the, from the most horrible things that could happen with us. But yet, science is losing the trust that people have in it. Global communities, so, demand disasters to trust, to truth. The global market, the global carbon credit market. For Suriname, for example, 
to have a contest to be in the global markets of carbon credits, for us to have carbon rewards. We need truth, we need open data, we need open source. But yet, to convince people in Suriname to join the adventure, you need trust. You need to look in the eyes of the person. To gather scientists for the first time, not after reading an article, for the first time, you need trust. And most of the most uh, above everything, above everything, what we need in terms of uh, refi to reach people, to reach the, those communities outside of the ecosystem, it's to allow them to build trust between themselves. And today at Refi Spring, what we do is try to is try to build this trust by giving this by linking these local communities between themselves. And th hence the question. So we are here discussing how to save the planet, how to help poor countries, how to, how to produce social justice. But yet, who we are to our communities, to the place where we live or spend time in? Are we good people? Do we know the persons, the, our neighbors? Are we part of a community? Because if everyone at Web3 and Refi is not part of a local community, then we'll, be, we'll never reach mass adoption. If you can convince our neighbors about what is Refi on Web3, there will be no mass adoption. For the first boom for blockchain were uh, financial freedom, and then after the first, uh, the first bear market, everyone just grabbed the money and go, or they lost us. But then people bring what? Games and sports and art. What we need at Refi is to bring trust and narratives around trust. So at Refi Spring, what we do is create the bridge between the local communities and the Refi ecosystem. And these are some of the faces of the Refi ecosystem as we see it in the, in, at Refi Spring. Uh, while most of uh, Refi events are happening in Amsterdam, Berlin, uh, US, uh, London, we support events on the Global South, on Cameroon, Barichara, here in Colombia, 10 hours from here. I was there for a week, and they, are, they have there a full regeneration circle. Land, forest, water, and community. Not linked in any way to the Refi ecosystem. And that's why I, Joe Brewer, uh, Antonio Paglino, we are there for a week to try to solve the mystery about how to link that community with the Refi ecosystem. How to, how to have them benefiting from the things they already produced for the, for the earth and for the ecosystem as a whole. So, our invitation for the ecosystem is to build trust to build things not only for global solutions, but for local, local solutions. We need people to solve uh, issues about unemployment. This is refi also, because if a, if a small farmer in Amazon, in the Amazon forest, are unemployed, don't have like the right uh, income, a dignified income, they will start to move to illegality. And this will hurt the planet. So we need more than usually to build trust around the communities. And also, uh, we need to not, to not have one Refi Spring, but we need every protocol to have its own team for connecting with the communities, to have uh, maybe ambassador programs in the global south. Because without it, we'll never reach mass adoption, we'll never reach uh, the world we are trying to save. Uh, if anyone wants to help Refi Spring or, or the communities or the global south in general, just reach out to me and we will we'll talk because I forgot to get our, our social media <laughs> on the slides. Uh, thank you.
Thank you.